Gloucestershire facing defeat after spinners run riot. Hashim Amla produced a captain's knock. The veteran South African took the reins for Surrey in Rory Burns absence and put on 173 to help them to almost 500 first innings runs. Gloucestershire's reply had been brought to an end early by the weather, one wicket down and 45 runs on the board. They were soon up to 50, Hammond now with Brathwaite after the captain's day two departure. And on they went, looking for a platform and a way to frustrate their opponents, the score moving up towards three figures. But if they were going to make it to 100, they'd have to do it without Brathwaite. Surrey once again turning to the spinners early, the West Indies international out LBW to Verdi. And then Moriarty got in on the act, Lace surrounded by catchers and out had slip. The pair were trading wickets, Verdi had Cobain caught as he tried to find the boundary. Back to Moriarty, he had a wicket in the next over, Higgins out for a two ball duck, his leave not the best decision given the context. Gloucestershire were crumbling, with Bracey away on England duty, Tattersall was in for Gloucestershire and showed that the Kia Oval dressing rooms weren't the only threat to wicket keepers. Moriarty had him out caught down the leg side. He had Smith too, Jack's lightning under the lid to see Gloucestershire now 7 down and 360 behind, lunch taken with the latest wicket. Where all around him wickets had tumbled, Hammond remained resolute and his patience brought him a 50 after the interval, a moment for Gloucestershire in joy while they looked for a way back into proceedings. That was a long way away and it wouldn't be long before Surrey had their visitors down to their last two wickets. Will Jack's delivery was really something. Taylor left it alone and looked stunned as it turned into his off stump. Payne and Hammond took them to 150 but couldn't keep Surrey out. Payne bowled by Moriarty to seal his fourth consecutive five wicket bag for Surrey. It would be six in the end for the 22 year old. Hammond hammering a catch to Overton in the leg side. Gloucestershire all out for 158, still some 350 runs behind their hosts. The spinners had taken all 10 of the Gloucestershire wickets. Moriarty, Jax and Verdi all rewarded for some fine bowling. Only Hammond had been able to get to grips with the Surrey attack, his knock of 77 accounting for almost half of his side's return. Gloucestershire was straight back into the middle. Amler enforced the follow-on. He was going for the jugular with designs on a third day win. But Brathwaite and Dent refused to be beaten. 28 runs added before the tea interval. It was slow going from the pair after the break. Their patient start to the session shattered with a first wicket for a Surrey paceman. Overton handed a catch by Brathwaite. Abbott joined in, Dent out LBW and Gloucestershire had to start again with two fresh batsmen. There were only extras added to the score when Abbott had another. Lace bowled by a beauty from the Australian all-rounder to make the score 44 for three. The visitors would scrape past 50. Hammond and Cobain resisting the Surrey attack but it didn't last for long. Cobain pulled a short one from Verdi to the fence for his first boundary, but the spinner had his revenge a few balls later. The number four bowled by a fantastic off break and off he went, the celebration exuberant even by his standards. The Kia Oval crowd were treated to another show from Verdi, Higgins dancing down and stumped by Smith eventually. Hammond was defiant and picked up 10 runs in one Moriarty over first finding the fences and then clearing them as Gloucestershire played their way to 100. Alongside Tattersall he would take his side to the close without further loss, five wickets remaining and still 191 short of making Surrey bat again. But a spinning oval pitch and a high quality attack will make getting anything out of this game very difficult for the visitors on the final day.